What killed tech poi? It used to be one of the big focuses of this channel and indeed the wider poi world in general. And yet it seems like the poi world has kind of moved away from it. Why is that? Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, bringing you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I'm gonna to take a little trip down memory road and remember both the roots of my channel as well as why it and so much of the poi environment changed over the years. Before we dive in, I just wanna give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So many of you who have gone through my back catalog will doubtlessly discover that for many, many years, the way this channel worked was that I was posting a weekly video that I called my tech blog. Uh, I kind of stole the name from the tech blogs that uh, the Vulcan crew were doing, where they would take videos, both of the tricks that they were coming up with, as well as tricks that visitors to the Vulcan would come up with as well. Uh, and it kind of became the format for me for a very, very long time until, until I started getting into beginner tutorials. And over the years, it really feels like the term has kind of fallen out of favor. I very rarely hear people use it anymore, and usually the only times that I use it are when I'm exploring something in Poi history, and it happens to be one of those moments where it intersects with the world of Tech Poi. And while we're at it, what do I mean by Tech Poi? Well, I mean a certain culture that was centered around the kind of parameterization of Poi, of taking different tricks and figuring out what made them tick, and figuring out how you could change some of the variables involved in them. Sometimes Sometimes this meant that people would invent new tricks based upon older tricks that they already knew. Sometimes it meant that people would create frameworks to kind of classify different tricks together and suggest how they all interrelated. This would be the era of Vulcan Tech Gospel, as well as Charlie's Nine Square Theory, my own videos of course, uh, and you know, countless other videos and frameworks by people ranging from Alien John to Leo Akaza. You know, this was was really kind of the thriving part of the poi world when I first joined up with it back in like 2007-ish or something like that. Uh, and it continued to be like one of those really dominant kind of places where thought and energy were invested for several years after. And then things started to change over time. And it's not like people stopped trying to do hard tricks, but the way they talked about them and the way that they thought about them did change. So why was that? Well, in thinking about it, I've come up with five reasons that I think that Tech Poi fell out of favor, and I'd like to share them with you. So the first one is that I think those of us that were a part of this movement back in, you know, the late 2000s and early 2010s, did a pretty thorough job, like, you know, between Nine Square Theory and Vulcan Tech Gospel and the variety of other frameworks that were introduced at the time, I think we did a pretty comprehensive job of describing what Poi could do at that time. You know, there's a very famous quote when, I can't remember who it was, but some famous physicist was asked whether Newton or Einstein was more intelligent, that he didn't think he could answer the question because, you know, in Newton's case, he created physics that are kind of still the underpinning of how we think about physics today. And as he very eloquently put it, you can only describe the system of the world once. Uh, that, th it, it doesn't get rediscovered, you know? Uh, and I think likewise, a lot of the stuff that we dove into during this period wound up being stuff that, you know, was pretty comprehensive. And, you know, people only really get to discover that stuff once. And, you know, I think it should also be said that a lot of the stuff that we didn't cover under those frameworks, like, say, you know, contact boy and the like, uh, quite frankly, it, it's kind of difficult to come up with a system to describe what happens there in a lot of respects. And so, you know, the need for that kind of approach to looking at poise spinning diminished over the years. Which isn't to say that you can't come up with a framework for describing all the tricks in contact poi. I'm just saying that we never did and that um, there would definitely be a series of really important insights that would be necessary to get there. Hey, maybe you're the person that'll be able to do that. 
So the second thing that I think was a big factor in kind of the moving on from the tech boy movement and everything <laughs> was actually the advent of Instagram. In the same way that YouTube helped the rise of tech boy because people could put together videos where they were showing off a bunch of different tricks all together and, you know, describing frameworks and the like and everything, you know, YouTube was a massively important tool for spreading out Poi information and came at the perfect time for people who were trying to come up with ways for describing families of tricks to be able to do so. Instagram, on the other hand, incentivizes a very, very different kind of behavior. So for a lot of Instagram's history, you couldn't upload very long videos. You know, I remember a time when I very deliberately avoided posting anything on Instagram because, you know, I felt like the core of my mission was to upload educational content. And I just didn't see how you could upload really good educational content that was only 15 seconds long. That changed once they changed the time limit to a minute. And of course, now that IGTV is a thing, you can upload up to 15 minute videos and I'm doing that. But when you have to keep your content short like that, it incentivizes creating individual tricks that are kind of like one trick ponies. That is, you know, rather than having to create a body of work, you can just create, you, you can just create a video for the thing that you've just come up with and post it right away and automatically get the reward of the likes and the views and everything. So, instead of creating 15 minute long videos of months worth of work, the shift became, you know, you're going to create really short videos of stuff that you just came up with today. And I think because of that, Instagram and the wide adoption of it have kind of incentivized shorter attention span thinking when it comes to poi spinning. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but in terms of coming up with frameworks, you're gonna have a really, really hard time either coming up with or explaining a framework in only a minute. In addition, many of the really influential players in those tech poi years wound up either losing interest and moving on or pivoting into other pursuits. You know, Alien John started Fiberflies. Uh, Zan Moore went off and started a family. I switched over into primarily doing, you know, beginner education and dance work. Um, you know, when you have some of those big movers and shakers, and there's not a whole lot of people coming in to fill in the gaps after them and everything, it creates kind of a vacuum. And without the content being produced, there's less stuff out there to inspire people to come up with new stuff in that vein. Also, tastes change over time. Like, you know, there's no movement that lasts forever. Uh, any kind of movement in art, any kind of movement in literature, you know, it, it has its moment in the sun where it is definitely kind of riding the wave of zeitgeist and everything, and then people are ready to move on to the new thing, or they realize that perhaps there's some element of their experience that's not being covered under that particular movement, and they move on from there. And poi is no different. You know, I've been around long enough that I've seen several cycles of different kinds of poi tricks come and go. You know, I remember when I first started up, uh, contact poi was stuff having to do with hand contact with the tether. You know, the, the idea of doing contact rolls and everything that everybody would be doing that was still a few years away. And then, you know, John Alvarez comes around with gunslingers and tether manipulations come back into vogue. Tastes, focus, and, you know, just people's attention spans change over time. And I think that any kind of poi movement is going to have an expiration date. Tech boy included. And finally, and I think this is honestly the biggest variable, is I think that the circus craze and the attempts to merge together uh, poi spinning and uh, the circus world are kind of the big thing that killed it. So what do I mean by that? Well, I remember the years when Keith Marshall was touring through the United States and was getting people interested in like three poi and poi juggling and everything. And there was this entire cadre of people that were like kind of part of Keith's posse and everything that were learning all these things from him. And that then went to the EJC that year to see uh, all the performers in the south of France uh, doing their stuff because they don't post any of their stuff online. 
And they came back and decided that that was the new thing that everybody should be investing their time and energy into. And that really changed how people thought about poi. All of the sudden, instead of trying to clarify the vocabulary of what we were doing, we were trying to figure out how to adapt another vocabulary to what we were already doing. So it became about like numbers juggling with poi. It became about penguin tosses and just all of these different things that the circus world kind of already carved out a vocabulary for years ago. And we just kind of were assimilating it into what we could do. And you know, the kind of poi spinning circus fusion thing is kind of where a lot of our young up and coming thinkers decided to channel all of their energies into. Even people that had started off in kind of a tech poi place like Tim Goddard or a sophomore found themselves kind of shifting their focus a wee bit into more circus oriented poi spinning. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, movements come and movements go and everything. And that just happened to be the movement that caught people's attention in the latter part of the 2010s. So in the end, I have a lot of nostalgia for this period in poi history because you know, for those of us that were doing it, it really felt like we were discovering new things by the day and it felt really fresh and exciting and everything. But, you know, it also had its time and uh, it's something that I was really proud to be a part of, but that, uh, you know, I'm even more excited for where Poi has evolved to and where it is going to evolve still in the future. What do you think killed Tech Poi? Let me know down in the comments. Am I overestimating the impact of the circus craze? Am I just looking at it all through rose colored glasses? Did Tech Poi never go away and I'm just disconnected from it? I would love to know your thoughts. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to help people find this video and help the channel grow. And a huge thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind contributions of these amazing folks right here. These are my Flow patrons on Patreon, and they, along with the wonderful folks listed down in the description, make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Uh, if you would like to sign up to support my mission of bringing Flow Arts and Poi Spinning to the entire world, you can do so by heading on over to patreon.com slash directsfactorpoi and signing up. You can get early access to all of my content, as well as a say in what topics I tackle in the future. Plus which, uh, I upload some behind the scenes stuff and some extras there on occasion too. So you should go check that out. Please and thank you.